Hello everyone and thank you for joining us live for the third session of the Discover Moldova program. Discover Moldova is a series of six events delivered once a month organized by America House Kishinev in partnership with Antrim, the National Inbound Tourism Association of Moldova. In the first session of the program, we talked about the Moldovan gastronomy, the traditional meals and recipes from different regions of Moldova. In the second one, we discussed soft adventure activities such as rock climbing, kayaking, bird watching, hot air ballooning, grapes harvesting, grape stomping, and other authentic experiences a foreign visitor can enjoy in Moldova. And our today's uh, topic is Mertishor and the cultural topic. My name is Margareta Kalugiar. I am the program manager at America House, and our special guest today is Tatiana Lupashku, General Secretary of the National Tourism, uh, Tourist Guide Association from Moldova and accredited National Tourist Guide Trainer with a 10 year experience in tourism uh, industry. Uh, hello, Tatiana. Hello, uh, hello, everyone. Uh, nice to have you Hi. here. I am so glad to have you here as, um, as our guest for this session and thank you for accepting the invitation to share your knowledge about Moldova, uh, Moldova's culture. Uh, before starting, uh, I would like to inform our viewers that uh, they can ask their questions in the comments section. And um, now uh, I will uh, let you share your presentation. I know you prepared for us and we will start. Thank you, Margareta. Thank you for the invitation. It's a pleasure for me to share uh, information and knowledge about the uh, local culture and um, traditions. And one of them, of course, is Mertesshore, uh, which actually is celebrated all the March. Uh, so uh, welcome to Moldova and let's start the journey. Uh, you may know or you may not know, uh, but uh, somewhere in the world we are uh, here, as you can see on the map, uh, quite in the middle of, uh, of Europe, I would say. Uh, and uh, we are considered to be the first of the beaten path of travel destination in Europe, according to Lonely Planet. So you can be uh, one of the first coming uh, in our country and um, uh, to check uh, our paths. And as Margareta said, I'm Tatiana Lupashku and I'm a tourist guide. Actually, I'm uh, in love with uh, travel in general around the world and of course uh, in my country. So I hope you will enjoy the trip in Moldova with me today. As Margareta said, we have different type of uh, possibility to travel in Moldova and different type of experience. Uh, but today we'll speak more about uh, culture and traditions because uh, we are in uh, March, as uh, we all know, and uh, in March we celebrate Mertesor. Actually, Mertesor is celebrated in the spring. As the first uh, of March, everyone receive or give a Mertesor. And actually, you can see here in the picture, uh, a child is giving to, to the mother uh, a Mertesor, the, sp the, the symbol of, of spring and also uh, the symbol of peace, the symbol of um, uh, gratitude, uh, the hope of a beautiful uh, spring, uh, because we are all um, after winter, a uh, cold one, so we hope to see the sun, to see um, more warmer times. So this is uh, one of the way we celebrate the spring. Actually, uh, this uh, practice is um, also uh, taking place in Bulgaria, in North Macedonia, and also in Romania. So if you'll be in uh, any of this country in March, for sure, you'll see also this Merchashore, which, by the way, is inscribed in UNESCO representative list of intangible cultural heritage. Uh, so it's uh, one of the um, important uh, symbols that pass through time. And it's still uh, kept till, uh, till nowadays. And as you saw, uh, it's white and red. You can see in the picture, and you can see also on Margareta uh, this uh, symbol of, uh, of spring. And I have in uh, my ears, let's say, uh, because 
initially uh, the symbol was uh, weird in a different way as a jewelry now we just keep it it in the way that margareta has now but anyway different persons are also uh, putting on hand uh, or like me <laughs> in the years originally it's considered that it has maybe eight uh, thousand years uh, it's according to romanian horologist uh, it was discovered like a necklace uh, that was uh, used actually also in the spring but it was made from uh, river pebbles uh, that was painted in white and red another version is that it's uh, originally from roman empire where actually the new year was celebrated at the beginning of uh, Martius or March, or as we say in uh, Romanian, uh, Martie. Actually, Martisor is a diminutive of uh, month Martie. And it's considered that the red color symbolizes the war, while the white one is the peace. Because actually, in the Roman Empire, uh, Martius was also uh, the god of war but also was the god of agriculture. So actually we celebrate, um, let's say the end of a hard winter and the start of a uh, good agriculture period uh, with peace. By um, the way also people are not sure where it comes from because also the Dutchians celebrated uh, the new year and the first month of uh, in spring in March uh, so it's considered also uh, a tradition from uh, from Dutchians. Uh, Dutchians were uh, people living, uh, by the way, in the area where Moldova is now and Romania of nowadays. But we speak about uh, first century, second century uh, after uh, Christ. So nobody exactly knows and can prove uh, where exactly started this tradition. But as you can see, it has a long journey that still uh, is kept uh, to nowadays, and that's why it's uh, registered in the UNESCO uh, heritage list. Of course, uh, such a symbol uh, couldn't uh, exist without a lot of uh, legends, a lot of stories. And uh, one of them is saying that um, in the spring, um, Early in the spring, as we all know, snowdrops are uh, coming to give us joy and to, let's say, um, inform us that soon will be uh, the spring, but sometimes they are coming uh, out too early. So the story tells that the spring saw uh, the snowdrop coming out, but the winter tried to frozen him, so the spring protected uh, but from uh, her fingers um, dropped some uh, blood, of, some drops of blood. And from this point, we have this uh, white of the winter and uh, the red of, um, from the blood of the spring. In combination, it's very um, short that we have uh, as a traditional uh, element that we have in uh, in March. So early, I was said that uh, in all this time it was made by river pebbles colored in red and white. Maybe they had this uh, the same legend that we have uh, today. Maybe uh, now not, but actually nowadays uh, it is offered to mostly to female members of family, but also to friends, colleagues, and uh, this means that you show respect friendship or admiration to a person usually people that know each other are offering this thing uh, this symbol of uh, spring the symbol of uh, uh, peace and um, and joy and you have to know what to do with it at the end of march because at the end of march you should hang it on a fruit tree and make a wish and it is said that the wish definitely will, um, will come to life. Uh, the important thing is that the tree should be with flowers already. And actually it was considered that um, now we put on the tree on the last day of the March, 
met initially, uh, people put it on the tree the first moment they saw some flowers on a uh, fruit tree. You will do in a way or another, I am sure that your wish will come to life. So, uh, Marcishore was one of uh, our traditional part, but we'll speak about different others so that you can understand more closely our tradition, our country and our culture. And of course, culture is always combined with history. Here, for example, in the picture, you can see a fortress. It's the fortress of Soroka, it's in the north part of the country. Uh, and it's considered that it was built by Stefan the Great, one of the greatest kings of uh, Moldova, um, in uh, the 15th century. For, from other versions, it's considered that it was older, but it was built uh, by wood. Later on, it was remade. Anyway, for sure, you can still visit it. It's still functioning and still uh, there near the river Nistru. So you can have um, travel in time, but still he be in, uh, in our period, in our year. Well, the traditions in time uh, became to be more and more uh, diverse because of the mix of culture. Because actually here we have a mix of Moldavian, Romanian, Russian, Ukrainian, Greek, Tatars, uh, Turkish, and uh, many others, also Bulgarian, also Gagauzian. So it's actually a mix of cultures here in, in this territory. Maybe probably for that you will see uh, some similitudes with the other countries. Because uh, probably you know, or maybe you don't know, we are a, friend, a friendly country, we receive uh, a lot of guests. Uh, so of course we take uh, some elements from them and we offer uh, some elements uh, to them from our culture and tradition. Uh, but also, uh, Moldova is uh, from the oldest time, it's a crossroad from different civilizations. So we had here a uh, Roman Empire closer to us, we had uh, here Ottoman Empire, Russian Empire, and of course each of them uh, lived a trace of uh, their culture which we integrated in uh, our tradition, in our culture, and we have uh, what we have today. But that doesn't mean that we have our tradition and our culture only from the mix of civilization that we know nowadays. Many of our tradition war symbols are coming from a long, long time ago, from the period when in this area uh, was known like Kukuten Tripolian, Tripolian civilization. And actually, you can see on the map, here is a part of Romania from nowadays, a Republic of Moldova, and a part of Ukraine from of nowadays. So this civilization, this culture, uh, lived in this area. And we'll see later on why I'm pointing out uh, about uh, this uh, culture. Because we have, till now, we have some elements that we are used. And imagine that uh, it's considered that they were in this area. You can see here, uh, a lot, a lot of years ago, uh, in the um, uh, Neolithical, in Neolithical archaeological culture of Eastern Europe. Uh, the, vase, the vessel that you can see here is uh, made from clay. It's actually a handmade one, also uh, the statues that are um, on the bottom part. And imagine that um, many of our uh, clay masters from uh, nowadays can hardly uh, make a copy of, uh, of this vessel. So imagine how advanced was their technology of making uh, pottery in that uh, period of time. Also pay attention to the symbols that are on the vessels, because later on uh, we will talk uh, about them on symbols that we still use on other elements of our daily use. Um, here you have a reproduction of probably how was the dress uh, and the object of life of this civilization. I'm saying probably because uh, it's too difficult to uh, prove 
uh, the real um, elements on the class. We can only suppose because we have only the vessels that are remained and uh, the statues. So for sure, element and symbol that were used on these vessels, of course, they all used on, uh, on the dresses, for example. So we can just um, approximately understand uh, what symbol they used. But all uh, this usually was considered to be <clears throat> put it in a specific places for protection, uh, as we use, for example, our mertis for, uh, for the protection of the winter in, um, in front of the spring. So uh, some of them were for, prote for protection. Some of them were considered to be for good health uh, or for help. Or, or for any other need of, uh, of the person or, or the family. And a reproduction of a small village of the civilization would look uh, some kind of like that. Um, some of the houses were even two floors and uh, some of them one floor. Many of them, uh, of course, uh, was in the same area, uh, living like a common community like a big family, um, we can say so. And uh, helping each other in their daily life. What is uh, specifically and interesting is that on the vessels or all, quite all the um, uh, objects that were found have elements of a female, of a woman. That gives us the supposition that uh, they were civilization that um, considered the mother godness. Uh, so the woman was the most important element in this civilization. Um, different uh, statues are uh, bringing us uh, to the thoughts that an important uh, woman was, of course, because uh, she bring to life uh, a new generation. So they paid attention very much to this, uh, specifically because the woman bring the life to the new generation. And that's why she was depicted in the, on the vessels. That's why we have a lot of statues uh, from that period specifically as women, uh, so it's easy to understand the form of the um, of the object that it's a woman there, and uh, maybe you uh, saw this um, uh, on the right hand side this person who is thinking. Uh, well, probably he is thinking, but uh, actually, knowing that this civilization were mostly sedentary, they are staying in the same area, they didn't go from a place to another, and they are using mostly the agriculture. But considering uh, the period they lived, we may suppose that they didn't have uh, such a technology, of course, that we have today to, um, to do the agriculture. So they only put it all uh, the elements in the soil and just had to wait till it will bring um, a new product, uh, a fruit or vegetable or, or something else. Uh, so probably most of the um, specific of this um, statue will be that he is waiting uh, that the fruit will, uh, will come out or the, the vegetable. Of course, we can only suppose some things knowing that they are an agriculture um, civilization and culture. And by the way, knowing that a culture that are staying on the same place is a culture that is, um, how would I say better? A culture that don't need uh, other territories, a culture that prefers to uh, grow up uh, in the same family at the same place. So they didn't expand, so they didn't fight, because by the way, uh, archaeologists didn't find any object that will show that they were fighters or warriors or um, um, some kind of that. So a peaceful uh, civilization, probably from that period we had the symbol of spring and the symbol of peace. But Something is interesting with that. A peaceful civilization, but we don't have any trace of their uh, houses or um, except of uh, of the pottery 
or um, some statue. By the way, the statue also are made, are made uh, by clay. And uh, maybe you know, maybe you don't know, but the clay, if you put it in fire, it becomes stronger. So the clay in the fire uh, has a better resistance. But the houses is considered that they destroyed and they burned each uh, 60, 80 years. And they moved in another place, closer to their location, but in another place, and live there again 60, 80 years, and then move again in another place. There are different kinds of uh, supposition, probably because the house didn't resist more than this uh, period of time, or maybe that um, they were a civilization um, really sustainable. We will now in our time, in our period, we want to be sustainable, not to, to leave a trace uh, on, uh, on the earth. Well, they tried to do everything that not to disturb the earth, so they didn't leave any trace, except, as I said, uh, vessels of clay or um, some statues. But of course, time passes. Uh, some traditions uh, are preserved till nowadays, some are not. Some of them we just uh, might suppose that they are come uh, through legends and through storytelling. But pottery still exists nowadays. Um, as I said, uh, it's difficult to reproduce the pottery of Pukuten civilization, but still we have a good um, culture in making the pottery in, uh, in Moldova. There are uh, different areas where you can visit a pottery house, a pottery family, and even to experience, uh, to put your hands in the clay and um, to see what you can do from this. Because actually looking how the master is creating a vessel is uh, interesting. And you think that it's an easy thing. But actually, when you try, you understand that uh, with the clay, you should be uh, strong, but also you should be um, calm and uh, to give, make a good contact, like uh, to have a good uh, form of, uh, of the vessel you want to, to have. And for example, one of the places you can uh, experience uh, this is uh, the Potter Vasily Gonchar. It's in the village Hodinesh in district uh, Kazaraj. It's not too far from Kishinev. You can go there uh, in a one day tour, let's say. You know, stay at the house of uh, the pottery, uh, visit, uh, um, even participate at a master class or um, a workshop guided by uh, the artist. Uh, or the artist family, because actually uh, Gonchar family is a family that um, are transmitting the tradition of uh, making pottery from generation to generation. What is more interesting that uh, all the men are Vasile, so his father was Vasile, he is Vasile, and his son is also Vasile. Uh, his father was a, um, uh, a potter, he is a potter, and hopefully his son will be a potter in, uh, in future to continue with this tradition. And by the way, you can there even taste various uh, traditional food that is cooked in a pottery vessel. Because the food uh, depends not only on the elements that you put there, on vegetables or food or anything else you put in, um, in a dish, but also important is the vessels you use. And if you prepare the same meal uh, as we are used to do now in the city, and the same meal in a pottery vest, you'll see the difference is enormous. I'm not saying that the one made in city is not good. Of course, it's good, it's tasty, but uh, it's totally different from the one uh, made in uh, these pottery vases. So we can um, have all the journey, create the pottery, and then taste the food made in that pottery and feel like you are in a Kukuten civilization, let's say, uh, thousands of years ago. Would be nice to travel in one day, thousand years ago. Hmm? <laughs> and of course, uh, we are keeping old tradition, but we also like uh, the new, we like the comfort, we like uh, modern hotels. So we have also, uh, even in Kishina, we have hotels 
uh, that are using traditional elements integrated in their decoration. So you can see here in the picture is a bedroom of the hotel, by the way, uh, from Chisinau, and they are using uh, some elements of our carpets. And we'll go later on and we'll speak about that. So you have here tradition combined with um, the new style, with the comfort. So if you prefer to have a comfort that you are used in your home, but uh, still to taste uh, some element of tradition, you can find this kind of hotel as well in Chisinau. And by the way, not only in Chisinau, there are also a few you know, around the country. And why I'm making uh, this point? Because uh, traditional world carpet waving is also a UNESCO heritage. It was registered uh, in UNESCO heritage a few years ago. And um, each element that is in the carpet, on the carpet it's waved, has also a symbol, uh, has a message. And for example, the carpet you see on the picture has the pattern, the tree of life. And actually in Moldova, the tree of life is considered to be one of probably the sacred symbol that we have. Uh, you'll uh, see for sure it and will hear about it every time. And by the way, if you look at the word Moldova, it also has like a tree uh, upper on the letter M. Uh, because actually the tree of life is also a symbol that is used from the ancient time. It's considered that um, each person has his tree. Uh, we have our um, roots from the past generation and uh, we continue with the future generation. But also we have a road in our life. Um, the tree has uh, different elements on it. Uh, for each person, it will be different. That's why uh, this carpet can have another family, for example, made a little bit different with a little bit other elements, but still the structure will be will be the same. Um, Moldavian carpet usually are inspired, of course, from the nature because uh, they are made here in this period in this area from Pukutan civilization, of course. Um, the technique probably changed in time, but still uh, the tradition is to be inspired from the nature and to reproduce the elements on the carpets. Um, many of the elements are quite geometrical, so you really have to, to look carefully and you'll understand later on what symbol is, is there. Uh, on many of the carpets, women that are waving are also making a form of a woman. Uh, put it there like uh, a signature that this is my carpet, I made it. Uh, but what is important that all the time uh, the woman or the man that is uh, made in the carpet will be smaller than the tree. Because the tree was considered to be uh, like a sacker, like something uh, in Moldova, actually, we all are saying that every person in his life uh, has to plant a tree, uh, give birth to a, per to a child, and um, uh, uh, create a source of water. This comes from uh, the oldest time. So it's uh, the elements that are considered to be mo the most important in, uh, in our life. So that's why uh, um, this element, the tree of life, is also found um, on the carpets. And by the way, if you are interested in tasting how to do a carpet, you can also do that. You can participate at the workshop, for example, at Rustikart um, uh, in the village Klishova Nova. It's a complex that offers a museum where you can look at the, the oldest carpet, uh, but also a training center where you can practice um, different technique of waving the carpets because actually the waving is different by the dimension of the carpet and by the destination because the carpets can be used on the wall, on the floor, uh, or um, for any other decoration. Uh, the carpet that you saw earlier was used mostly on the wall because it's difficult to be created. It's a uh, necessary lot of time. Uh, usually it was made during the winter period Mm, so a few months was needed to create this carpet. And of course, you don't want to put it on the floor. 
usually it was put it on a wall but also it was like a decoration uh, but at the same time uh, kept the wall warm in the winter time so it has um, a double um, meaning and a double useful let's say well of course uh, in our period uh, many are using this carpet on the floor as well uh, but some uh, some of the family are still keeping them on the walls as i said you can uh, you can participate at the workshop even if you have uh, kids you can come there with them and they will practice um, different uh, elements of creating a carpet because by the way this complex is making uh, all uh, the creation of the carpets from the beginning uh, of the procedures they are using natural colors uh, for for the carpet so everything that you saw the colors you see are not um, uh, like too intense because they are using natural uh, element to create to create them and um, you can go there also on different festivals. They are uh, making each year the festival of the carpet, uh, where you can meet different uh, women that are waving from this region and not only, because actually in Moldova, all the regions of the, car uh, the country are um, making these uh, carpets in a different style, in a different ma manner, but, uh, but still is a woven carpet, a carpet that um, needs a lot of time and effort and a lot of knowledge uh, to, to create it. And if you are by, um, by case in Dubai at the Expo, you can also uh, go at the uh, National Pavilion of Moldova and you'll see there uh, the carpets of Moldova that I exposed. Um, as I know, they will be in March as well because in April they will change the uh, elements of the exhibition uh, but otherwise you can come in Moldova and you can uh, see you can uh, taste them um, and you can even uh, buy a carpet for you by the way uh, our women are creating uh, these carpets as big as you need uh, or as small as you want so you can put uh, on the wall like a small uh, um, decoration element or you can create uh, a big one uh, to have on your walls and to have uh, uh, some traditional elements uh, from Moldova. And as I was said, uh, the Tree of Life is also the symbol of Moldova, uh, the symbol of uh, Moldova for tourism, but also the symbol of Moldova as a country because it was uh, taken for all the industries and it's used in um, um, every exhibition for every industry that is going abroad and also in the country. Um, so you can see here uh, different elements that are representing different industries. Uh, so the fruits, the textiles, uh, the wine, uh, even internet connection on the top, because by the way, we have uh, all around the country good internet connection. So you can come here, you can uh, work and enjoy uh, the culture and the traditions in different um, time of the year or why not to collaborate with uh, some of our industries in uh, in any business uh, you are interested and i cannot talk about uh, culture if i'm not talking about uh, ia ia exactly as a national blows uh, a part of uh, traditional costume also UNESCO cultural heritage, uh, because Mertzi Shore is a UNESCO heritage, so my idea was to present you uh, different elements of UNESCO heritage. And what you can see in the image is actually a, a reproduction um, um, of uh, IA, but actually that respects all the elements uh, that needed to be respected. It's made according to a old IA by a group of, uh, of ladies, um, if you are interested, by the way, you can look um, on Facebook or on YouTube at Maestria and you'll find there uh, different symbols that are used um, to create a year, to create uh, traditional elements. Uh, if you want a really um, a year that will respect all the uh, requirements of a traditional year, then you should uh, look for uh, more videos or more information because uh, all the elements are put in there um, 
not by mistake. Uh, they have, of course, uh, a design, but they have also a meaning because, for example, the upper part of uh, um, down the shoulders, um, depending on the way you will uh, put the elements there, will represent that you are, for example, a married woman or a free woman or um, you are divorced uh, or you are from a um, noble family or, for example, you are for a family with a small uh, uh, revenues because, uh, of course, uh, all these need um, finance because uh, in a um, few centuries ago, for example, only rich families could afford to create um, traditional blouses with uh, different elements uh, on them because that will mean time, working time, but also uh, money for, um, for the material needed for this, uh, for this blouse. Uh, but also you can buy from local designers uh, IA that is adjusted uh, to a modern style. So you'll still see uh, elements that are used traditionally, but uh, integrated in, um, in something more modern, uh, but we'll still have an idea of, uh, of IA. I just put it here, only a few brands, but uh, there are plenty of them. Uh, so for sure, if you'll uh, you'll go for internet, you'll um, you'll find information. And uh, as I said, where you go to Maestria, you look uh, all the steps, and you start uh, to create your own. And especially, I put it uh, here a small part of um, of IA so that you can see uh, what um, effort has to be uh, done because you see here a lot of elements. So that means a lot of uh, time to work. Um, as I know, uh, I didn't uh, do my year yet, uh, but I, I plan to do that. Uh, but as I know from uh, the person that did, uh, that will take at least six months. Mm, if you will uh, work, let's say, two hours a day, uh, but that might take uh, till one year. Of course, that depends. Uh, how complicated will be um, the elements you will uh, choose, uh, how fast you are in working. But on the other hand, is a good way to uh, meditate, is a good way to stay by the way together with other persons and uh, to talk, to sing and work in, um, in the same time. Because by the way, uh, this kind of uh, workshop was traditional in Moldova and are still used in some uh, areas and some of the um, um, creative complex are doing this workshop where different women are coming uh, to work together uh, somebody is waving the carpet somebody is making a year somebody is singing uh, so everyone is working on her own piece of work but they are all together changing ideas uh, changing energy and uh, inspiring uh, each other that can be done as well in Moldova. So, well, culture is culture, but what culture without history? <laughs> we talked a little bit about uh, Kukuten civilization, then I told you that later on we had the Dachian period, but closer to, to our days, our times, uh, will be also the period of um, Stefan the Great and the Saint is one of the king I told you earlier when we talked about uh, Soroka Fortress that ruled uh, the country for 47 years. Uh, it was considered a good strategic, a good diplomat, a person who, know, who knew how to talk with the Ottoman Empire, for example, uh, in order that to to keep uh, the country uh, safe, but also a person who um, fight against Ottoman Empire to keep the country safe. Uh, it's considered to be a legend and a hero. Uh, so that's why in Moldova was created a route named Stefan the Great um, and the Saint route. You can go uh, on this link and there you'll see uh, different places uh, that are part of this route. You'll also find information. And by the way, the route of Stefan the Great is in combination with um, Romania because uh, his kingdom was 
Moldova and Moldova in the period of Stefan the Great was uh, bigger than we know um, Republic of Moldova. So by the way, don't make the confusion. Um, in Romania, there is a territory that is named, an area that is named Moldova, and uh, we are in the Republic of Moldova. So during the Stefan the Great, all this was uh, one, uh, one territory. So that's why this route is made by both countries. And uh, you can see there um, the elements and the places from Romania and from, uh, from Moldova as well. Uh, some of them are connected directly with Stefan the Great. I mean, he participated, for example, in building a monastery or a church. Uh, yeah. Or, for example, uh, he passed through through that area, or he stayed for um, for a period in that area, uh, or different other connection that uh, Stephen the Great had with that uh, with that place. So, if you are interested in uh, this kind of um, tourism, you can go there and then check for more. Talking about uh, churches, I was saying that uh, Stefan the Great built uh, a lot of churches, but also in Moldova, you'll find churches that are built by nature. For example, as you can see, this one is in uh, Old Orche, is a cave monastery. Uh, you can see on the um, uh, top right side, uh, a hill with a bell. Under it actually is uh, the church. So you can see on, uh, on the left side, the altar is made in the cave, uh, practically by the nature, um, because uh, this is a limestone and it was a little bit modulated by um, uh, monarchs who lived uh, here. And it's considered that monarchs lived here from a few centuries ago when the river was bigger than it's now and the main entrance was from the part of the river to the church. Uh, so you had to be a good climber in that period to enter in, uh, in this church. But that was uh, made in purpose uh, because um, usually uh, churches were made or monasteries were made in places safe, um, difficult to reach. Uh, in the world to be to be safe in it. Well, now it's uh, it's more easy. Now you enter um, from the other side, not from the side of the river, and you just uh, can uh, get out on this balcony and to have the view of this uh, of this platform. But if you don't want to go far away from uh, from Kishina, or maybe you have only a few a few days and uh, a few hours to to visit. Then you can choose one of the, uh, the museums. Um, in the National Museum of History, for example, you'll find uh, different elements, different bases from the Kufutin civilization uh, where, that I talked about earlier. And of course, uh, later uh, periods of time. National Museum of Art, of course, you'll find different uh, arts there. National Museum of Ethnography and the Natural History. We talked about uh, national costume, carpets, uh, elements used um, by locals. Definitely you'll find them there. Or maybe if you want to visit a house that was used, I don't know, for example, in the 19th century, you can go uh, to the Pushkin House Museum. It's a, um, a local house where uh, Alexander Sergeyevich Pushkin, the Russian writer, um, stayed uh, while he was in Moldova. But actually, the house um, appertained to a local uh, person from Moldova. So you can go there and visit how was a house in the 19th century and uh, feel, uh, feel the story in, uh, in the rocks of the house. If you'll have time, or by the case, you'll be in uh, different period of time in Moldova, I invite you to different festivals. I put it here, only a few of them because there are plenty. Uh, let's hope that um, the situation with the COVID will uh, calm down and uh, from this year we'll uh, start again a lot of uh, events and festival. Uh, of course, Marcesor is in the period of March. I would really recommend uh, the Descopere Festival. It's an open air um, uh, classical music festival uh, that is made in the Old Orche, where I uh, showed you the cave monastery uh, a few moments ago. It's an open air uh, festival with an orchestra, with um, um, 
classical music around the rocks. You are uh, around the rocks and uh, you can see and hear um, the sound of the music in the nature. Or if you are passionate about clubs, it's a Yamani, it's a traditional festival of uh, art and craft, but the main point is on the traditional uh, blouses, or you can go to um, uh, Vasilia Gonchara Pottery, but he also organized a uh, festival, or Kukuten Festival, or Kuvurudoruli Festival, or any other. And by the way, you can go to Moldova.travel and you'll see there different events and festivals that are all around the year and you'll choose the one um, closer to your period of staying in Moldova or to your preferences. Uh, as I told you, I like very much the open air classical music festival, uh, the Scopera, that's why I put it, uh, put it here. And it looks something like that. So you can see the scene, you can see people uh, are sitting in the open air. And it's really, uh, really op awesome sounds. Um, and totally different uh, feeling. Uh, it's not like you go in an opera house um, when you are outside. Well, talking about culture, I couldn't miss um, talking to you about, uh, for example, uh, Gagauz, because actually we have here uh, Gagauz of Rasi is a place where you can, uh, we can stay in the south of the country. Uh, it's a place organized by a lady originally uh, Gagauzian um with different cultures and tradition uh, that we have in moldova but by the way some of them are quite the same because they are in this um, territory for a few centuries so the combination the mix of culture uh, that i talked to you at the beginning of the session uh, the mix of culture for sure uh, remained it's an area where you'll see um Gagauz actually is originally um, a Turkish uh, people, but they are far away of home, let's say, for centuries, and they are Christians, they are not Muslims. But they uh, speak an old Turkish language, they can understand each other when, we, when they are speaking with the person coming from, uh, from Turkey of nowadays. So if you want to experience different cultures uh, in one country, you can do that in Moldova. Um, coming here and to taste, uh, to feel better the life, I will recommend you slow tourism. And when I'm talking about slow tourism, I'm, come, I'm talking about going in a village, staying in a rural house, um, tasting traditional food, even preparing uh, food with the um, person you are staying. Um, I just put it here only a few, for example, Han Hanganu is near the river Nistru. Uh, or Casa de Lunca is in Old Orhear near the, the cave monastery I showed you. But of course, uh, you can choose according to your preference, but you will feel the country uh, different. Mm. And why not? You can come even in Easter time. Uh, it will be a period of uh, Eastern traditions. So um, they are coming. I mean, tourists and travelers are coming in Moldova. We are waiting you here. And uh, if you were in Moldova uh, before, we are waiting you to be our guest again. Hope you uh, you follow my my thoughts and my ideas, and uh, you have a little bit uh, more knowledge about. Uh, our culture and, uh, and tradition. And uh, let's see if we have any questions till now. Thank you very much, Tatiana, for this interesting presentation. We don't have um, any questions, so I think we will end it here. Um, thank you very much for providing us with so many <laughs> interesting uh, uh, pieces of information about Marcishore and Moldova's cultural sites and activities. Um, dear audience, we thank you for watching uh, this live. Our next uh, session is scheduled for April when we will uh, time travel to the Transnistrian region. Uh, this program um, is brought to you by America House Kishinev, the cultural center administered by the public affairs section of the U.S. Embassy in Moldova.
Moldova. Our center is open to everyone and the access is free of charge. Uh, you can find more uh, about us and our programs on our Facebook page, America House Kishinev, uh, or website, americahouse.mt. Thank you for being with us and I uh, say to you goodbye for now and have a peaceful evening. Have a nice spring, all. <laughs>